On today's Apple Daily, we are answering your questions about Apple Silicon, the M1 chip, and uh, what we got right in our predictions. Let's get into it. So on today's show, Big Sir, who guessed the name of the chips right? Some of the big questions, which M1 powered Apple Silicon Mac should you buy? Will it overheat in the MacBook Air without a fan? Should you wait for the 14 inch MacBook Pro? Should you buy an Intel MacBook Pro? Plus, I cave answers. For the latest Apple news, rumors and leaks, every weekday at 12 UTC, join us in the iCave. Guys, we did a live stream last night straight after the event. It was massive. We had like 500 odd people in there at different times. Super hard to keep up with the chat when it's that busy. So we are going to allow things like super chats, I think next time. I, I'm not trying to uh, bleed you guys for money, but it might just be a way of surfacing some of those questions that were just disappearing. But let's get into it. We will try and get through as many of these questions as we possibly can. Thank you all for joining, whoever did. Right, let's get into it. Right, let's start off here. Big Sur is coming out this Thursday or tomorrow or 12th of November, depending when you're watching this. But at the time of filming, it is coming out tomorrow, Thursday the 12th of November. Big Sur is coming to anyone that's got an Intel Mac that is compatible, you will be able to download it then. Next up, this is a shout out for Grady Bodger, who was the first person that I can find in the chat who said that he thought the uh, Apple silicon chips for Macs would be called the M1. Grady, you got it right. And literally your comment was just like, it will be M1. So like, no fuss there, mate. Good job. Is the M1 the A14X benchmark that we saw that we reported on a couple of days ago? Probably. Now we only assumed it was an A14X because it was uh, Apple ARM silicon based, similar number of cores to what we would be expecting and that is exactly what we got with the, M, uh, with the M1 chip. And just to run you through as well quickly. So the M1 chip itself is an Apple designed eight core CPU with four fast and four high efficiency cores, 16 core neural engine, eight core GPU, up to eight core GPU, we will come to that uh, shortly but it's also got all of the usual stuff that you would expect from an Apple Silicon chip in there, and this is basically what we were expecting. Also built into the M1 chip is your RAM. So as I've been bleating on about for quite some time, RAM is not gonna be upgradable. The only th time you can upgrade your RAM is at the point of purchase, and the options right now are eight or 16 gigabytes. So not up to 64s and 128s that people are asking for, but these are the entry point max. These are the ones that gets, get you started. Before you judge it, based on the eight to 16 gigs of RAM, wait and see what the performance is like because this is new architecture, it is a new way of running Mac OS and it is probably gonna be different from what you expect. So the big questions that everyone was asking in the live chat yesterday, should I go for the MacBook Air or the MacBook Pro? Now that really, for most people, I think the MacBook Air is gonna be absolutely enough. The base level MacBook Air has a slightly uh, lower performance processor and I mean very slightly, it's got seven instead of eight GPU cores, and this is very reminiscent of what happened with A12X and a A12Z. So the A12X processor was the early ones. They were the ones that were kind of coming out of the process. There were slight errors on the chips so that basically they would have a failure rate on one of those cores. So they, all that Apple would do is basically disable one of the cores, and that's what the A12X was. Now, once the production got a bit uh, better ramped up and became more reliable so that they could get all eight of those cores working in every chip, then that's when we got the A12Z, which was with every core enabled. This is not to say that Apple is not putting 10 cores on each of these, and the ones that have eight working cores are the ones that go into the M1s on the higher performance models, and the ones that only have, like, have three failed cores are the ones that go into these. It doesn't really matter. All they're saying is that if you buy the cheapest one, you will have at least seven working cores. If you buy the higher performance ones, which is basically anything apart from the very base level MacBook Air, you will get eight working cores. So in all honesty, is that core gonna make much difference in day-to-day -day use? Absolutely not. Is it gonna make a very small difference? I mean, we're talking maybe 8%, I guess, eight to 10% in the very most demanding workloads and maybe get you two or three more frames a second in some gaming stuff, maybe. But how much of your time are you gonna spend doing that? So in terms of which one should you buy, um, I think for the vast majority of people, the uncooled MacBook Air with the uh, seven core chip is absolutely fine. If you want the extra RAM, by all means go up to the 16. It will future-proof your Mac a little bit more, um, but just to give complete clarity, we have bought the very cheapest MacBook Air 
with the 7 core GPU with 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage so we are not upgrading anything on the one that we are buying um, which is going to be my wife's main computer I'm going to stick with this iMac for a little while I was very very tempted to go to the, uh, the Mac Mini but we're going to hold on just see what the performance is like in the air first and then we'll make a decision but yeah for most people the the choice is a flip up between the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro so the difference for your extra $200 to $300 is going to be you're going to get a slightly faster uh, GPU if you go for the base model of each. You are going to get active cooling, which might well make a difference, but we don't know yet. Until it gets into people's actual hands in the real world, we're not 100% sure, but you are going to have the fans in there. They've taken it out of the MacBook Air. You're going to get slightly longer battery life because you've got a bigger battery. You're going to get a brighter display and you're also going to get Apple's touch bar, which is very useful actually if you do video editing. So if you are doing gaming, probably go for the Pro. If you're doing most other stuff, especially if you do video editing in Final Cut, you will have no problems with the air. Will M1 overheat in the MacBook Air without a fan? Probably not. Unless you think that your iPad Pro overheats and need, is starting to thermal throttle, which I don't think anyone has ever experienced, um, I think you will be absolutely fine. That shouldn't be a problem at all. The thermal envelopes in these things are going to be massive compared to an Intel chip, and this is why. In terms of overheating, the reason that it shouldn't is because the M1 processor gets three times the performance per watt. Now, when we go back to when Apple moved from power PC to Intel, it was all about performance per watt and Intel has basically dropped the ball on this now. Um, the biggest problem with Intel stuff is that the only way they seem to be able to actually accelerate performance now is by throwing more cores at it and they can't even clock stuff much higher. They can't get their process down to the five nanometer level that Apple is using. So everything is just creating more heat, drawing more power from the battery, which is why performance for what, per watt has really suffered. So one of the other questions that lots of people were asking me in the chat, in the live stream especially, was should I wait for the 14 inch MacBook Pro? What 14 inch MacBook Pro are people talking about? This is a rumor. This is when Apple uh, went from the 15 inch to 16 inch MacBook Pro in basically the same chassis and just shrunk the bezels. Um, that's what happened and so everyone went oh well they must be doing the same with the 13 inch macbook pro up to a 14 inch apple has never made any whisperings that they're going to do this there is nothing that's come out from the supply chain that they're going to do this um i would expect that they're actually going to do a complete revamp a complete redesign potentially bring things like magsafe to the macbook pros so i would not absolutely 100 percent not wait i would buy what you need now and i would use it until something that you want more comes out and then you should sell the one that you have because resale on Apple stuff does really well, unless you currently own uh, an Intel MacBook, in which case, soz, um, that's probably not gonna be worth as much today as it was yesterday. Should I buy an Intel MacBook Pro 16 inch now before it comes out with Apple Silicon? Again, don't think you should. I don't think anyone should buy any Intel Mac anymore because we've now seen vaguely what this is gonna do and it is insane. So the only reason if you must buy an Intel MacBook is because you need boot camp. That's the only reason that I can understand that anyone would want to buy an Intel one right now. Now, Apple is still selling 13 inch MacBook Pros with Intel and they're also selling a Mac uh, mini option with Intel. I don't know why. I think it must be for those people that like either don't trust Apple Silicon yet absolutely must have boot camp performance wise they're not going to keep up with the apple silicon and they're more expensive so i think they're kind of leaving them there to uh, make a point that people really shouldn't buy them which is a weird kind of flex but i think that's what they're doing so what did we get right in our predictions well i think we were the only people from day one that were predicting a mac mini with apple silicon so win right there also the price of the mac mini with apple silicon has come down it didn't come down as much as i thought it would but uh when we actually looked at the uh, image of the mac mini with apple silicon on the screen that they showed the internals for the um for the cooling there's a massive gap in there there's a huge kind of empty space because there's one little board and a big fan and that's your lot so i still think they could shrink it down into about the size of an apple tv in future, call it a Mac Mini SE, which makes all the sense in the world, put it on a t-shirt, because then you could basically eliminate the fan, give it the same performance as the MacBook Air that we've just got with no fan and winning. Come on, Apple, I know you're watching. So we did get the price cut on that. We didn't get the price cut on the laptops that we thought. However, $8.99 for education, 
who doesn't know a student that you can give the money to to buy the thing? So just find a student, um, give them a happy meal or something, and they will buy it for you, and that's that's cool. So you can save your hundred dollars there. Really cool. That's what my wife is. So. I have to buy her a happy meal today. Enough of me babbling when we don't really have much detail on this stuff at the moment. Uh, all I can say is do not buy Intel Max right now. Buy Apple Silicon. It just is going to fly. Uh, Intel's stock took a bit of a dive yesterday. Apple's went up a bit. That kind of explains a lot of it. But we have got some IK answers to do, so we're going to smash through those really quickly now. Ayushman Sharma asks, IK answers, how does the new Macs with M1 affect developers who use Java? Um, up to which res can we watch video on the Mac, 1080p, 2K or 4K? So that is purely down to what display you've got. Um, so if you're using a Mac Mini, you can absolutely watch 4K, no problems at all. If you've got it plugged into a 6K display, you can watch 6K. 6K. I don't think it will struggle with 8K either. But the internal displays on the Mac, uh, the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air are both at 20, 2560 by 1600, I believe. So it's about 2K. Um, so that's, yeah, that's kind of what you've got built into them. But if you plug in an external monitor, you can watch 4K, no dramas. The power is there. You can edit three streams of 4K at ProRes with filters and stuff all over it and it's not going to skip a beat. Uh, in terms of Java, they did mention that in uh, running Java, it runs at one and a half times uh, faster than it did before, especially using Safari. However, we don't really know a great deal else, but if you could write Java on the old ones, you can write Java on these ones. It shouldn't be any problems, and it will probably compile, compile faster. Um, haven't seen it in the real world yet, so couldn't really confirm that for you. Grandarojo in Discord, I assume that's how you say it, um, Discord says, does the 699 price point entice you to purchase a mini? It was very close to, uh, my finger was hovering over the button, but because my wife is getting the MacBook Air right now, um, we're gonna get that, we're gonna see what the performance is like, and I can maybe hold off a little bit longer and maybe get an iMac instead once those arrive. Um, but that's purely because I don't need it right now. That that thing still works fine, and I'm gonna be able to play with Big Sur on the laptop, so there's no reason for me to grab it right away. Um, but yes, very tempting, and it's a very good deal. Uh, Roddy Lau in Discord asks, can you find out why the Apple Silicon M1 has many more cores than Intel? Also, what's the neural engine for? So, uh, the reason that we've got multiple cores is because Apple is basically building a single architecture, so they're building the A14 style cores, whatever they want to call it internally, they've probably got their own name. Um, four of those cores are for high performance, four of them are for high efficiency, so you've got four that just literally sip power, so they use like a tenth of what Intel was using when you're doing regular stuff, uh, using the OS, web browsing, all that kind of thing. The high, uh, high powered cores will kick in when you need them. So until then, they are just dormant and they're not using any power whatsoever. Um, and it's asymmetrical. I think they uh, use the term asymmetrical compute. So they will put the right bits of uh, code into the right parts of the processor. So in terms of uh, why it has that many cores is because they've got two different styles of cores. So you've basically got a quad core high power and a quad core high efficiency CPU in there. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and then what's the neural engine for? The neural engine is for machine learning and AI and all that kind of stuff. So rather than putting it through the main CPU or running it on a GPU, which is what others do, Apple has put in a 16 core, uh, 16 core processor into there that is literally just optimized purely for machine learning and AI. So all of that kind of stuff, things like voice recognition and all that sort of stuff will run just so much better through there than it does anywhere else. And it also just takes that pressure again off of your CPU and your GPU. So it just gives you even more headroom. Um, Notification Squad, we've got a couple of new members, Brucey and Abhishek Sharan. Thank you so much for joining the uh, Notification Squad. If you want a shout out in the next video, like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and uh, let me know in the comments that you've done that. Use the hashtag Notification Squad and you will get a shout out at the end of the next video. Find us on the socials and uh, all of that stuff is down in the comments. Go and find it. Love ya.